Hey, Smoke Master D here, um, smoking on my Belfab smoker today. Uh, when I first ordered this smoker, I asked Craig to make it as close to the 1975 workhorse pits as possible. Didn't quite work out that way. Uh, I have a video that I put out right when I got it. I'll link that above in case you want to see it. I say all of that to help you understand that I've been thinking about the engineering of the workhorse pits for a very long time. They're different workhorse pits than most other pit builders and their pits in that they use science and engineering to direct their decisions on the design features. So uh, you may look at it at a glance, the workhorse pit, and think that it looks like other pits, but there are some key things that are different. You know, they have a special term for, for what they do called computational fluid designs. So um, for a long time, I've studied workhorse pits and my videos have pointed several people in their direction. Uh, and as much as I appreciate them, I also have a really deep desire to try to understand how they work, uh, maybe to my detriment, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Over a year ago, a YouTuber named Outnumbered Barbecue came out with a one-year review of his workforce pits 1975. And in that review, one image really stood out to me, and I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. Now, it's uh, the throat of his 1975, and it has a baffle, a lot like other baffles, plates, in other offset smokers, it angles air, hot air downwards. Uh, but the one thing that really stands out in this picture, and, and you know, I've seen other 1975 uh, Workhorse Pits videos and they, they show the baffle, but after a year of use, you can really see that heat is coming straight up in those two places where it has not been welded, right? So some people have thought, you know, while well, they were just saving some time, not welding all the way across the baffle. No, no, there is a purpose for that. And it's to vent that heat straight up to the top uh, of the chamber where some of it bleeds through the top. So the idea is that, you know, it gets up there and it cools as it goes along and sort of filters down and creates an even heating environment and getting the heat to the top of the chamber and dividing it, you know, diffusing it is what I believe is, is what really makes the workhorse pits work. Uh, and there's a lot that goes into that, right? Having everything like the angle of the, the baffle correct, um, the right amount of spacing to, to shoot that ear upwards. So these workhorse pits are a work of art and science at the same time. But just in case you believe workhorse pits uh, work perfectly running even temps plus or minus five degrees all the time, it's not entirely true. And, and I say this just to give you more of a accurate picture of workhorse pits. Uh, in fact, in one interview with Kevin Kelly, uh, a little past the 36 minute mark, and I'm going to link that up at the top of the video as well. JD, the founder of Workhorse Pits, he explains that the calculation for the workhorse design are based on a number of assumptions, like a box, right? And uh, those assumptions, I assume, are kind of based on general usage of the smoker, general conditions, right? Um, that's to say that Workhorse Pits will work well in most situations uh, with most normal inputs, but they're not entirely foolproof. And, and like other traditional offset smokers, they do have a hot spot. So depending on how you change the baffles, it's gonna change the heat distribution through the smoker. Now, the temperature gauges at either end, you know, are they placed in, a, in such a way that they're going to give you pretty even temperatures despite what's going on in the middle? Um, that's an interesting question that I've asked myself. Uh, but for real hard data, this guy named Mike Rain, he has a YouTube channel called Smoke Scouts, uh, and he has some really good data on how the workhorse pit actually runs. 
And I'm going to link his video right up there at the top of the screen too. And the great thing is that Mike explains how to navigate uh, the differences in heat distribution with the baffles to get the best outcome for a brisket. So I really like the video uh, that's linked up there and you should definitely check it out. Um, but he's got great data there too and drawings with the heat distribution on it. Now, after I've said all of that, given all the caveats, and maybe I'll have a few more, uh, the workhorse pits heat distribution, I think was a lot better than mine uh, in my previous setup, right? Um, so with that in mind, I decided to spend a lot of my spring break working on this pit to make it more like the workhorse pit. I had a few disadvantages going in. One is that, you know, I'm using pictures from like, like from outnumbered barbecue. Uh, but you know, this pit has a 20 inch firebox instead of a 24. So the overlap between the two chambers is not the same. Now I try to compensate for that by putting the baffle up about a half an inch. Did that help? Uh, now I also have the, a slide out rack that angle bar, you know, is maybe impeding some of the airflow. You'll notice like mill scale and workhorse pits, they have drop in, in uh, racks. Is that for airflow purposes? I'm not entirely sure. The smoke collector doesn't go all the way across the chamber. Something I sort of regret and wish were different, but you know, maybe my smoker is not the best test case for, uh, for what I'm doing, but I decided to give it a go anyway. First, uh, I had to cut everything out from my previous baffle. Um, so that was a lot of, uh, you know, using an angle grinder to cut stuff. Then we hauled my friend Tim's gas tank welder over to my house. Uh, we changed out the plug for his uh, extension cord so that it would fit into my dryer plug. Then we worked with uh, the angle grinder again to make a piece of back wall section of steel as well as the, the baffle plate itself. And uh, we shaped those a little bit and then we welded them in. And uh, we added back uh, the, the rails for the racks. And uh, you know, then I had something a little bit closer to the Workhorse Pits 1975. Now, I did a biscuit test. Right now I'm doing some pulled pork. Uh, I think it's gonna turn out well. No matter how, how this baffle is working, I think it's, it's going to turn out well. Um, do I have this thing tuned perfectly yet? Uh, I don't think so. All right, it's time to check on some biscuits. Hotter right in the general vicinity of the firebox. Uh, hottest right here at the top of the fire um, on the second level rack fairly even from here on a little bit hotter right here on that one side uh this lower area so the three-fourths of uh the smoker that were um you know on the far side of the firebox look to be fairly even all right going. now so how is it going um so I think there's been some unexpected consequences from my baffle plate. Uh, over here, as you saw in uh, the biscuit test, uh, the temperature's quite low. It's actually hard for me to get it up uh, above something like 210 or 215. Um, I had I had this uh, the second level grate. I put one of the pork butts up there just to get it going along the bigger one. And I think that the big problem is that my smoke collector is kind of up top. I feel like if it was a bit lower or had a little bit more lower, the draw wouldn't be so top heavy. I think that the hot air is coming up across um, the top and missing this area down here. So I think that if I extended the smoke collector down um, that the um, draw would come down more and that this area wouldn't 
be uh, as cool as it is right now. Now, I say all this, uh, you know, to say, I hope that it was either encouraging or insightful to you. Maybe it's going to point you straight to getting a, a workhorse fit, you know, <laughs> instead of going through all this trouble that I go through to, to try to figure these things out. Um, but maybe you do have a pit. You know, maybe you have a, a Pecos, you know, from old country barbecue pits. And maybe you're thinking about taking out the baffle. You know, if I were you, I would try getting an angle grinder and cutting a slit up there at the top of the baffle and trying that first. You know, then at least you have the plate there uh, to block the radiant heat from the firebox. You could give that a try first. And if it doesn't work out, just take the plate out. So I like to think about all these things with engineering spend some of my time trying to make that engineering happen. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd have, please uh, hit the like button, you know, subscribe to my channel. And I hope you all enjoy some really good barbecue. And as always, go get your smoke on y'all.